Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, welcome to my tutorial on how to use masks in After Effects. I do hope that you've checked out my basics tutorial in After Effects. It's well worth watching that video so you're familiar with all the terms that I'm using. So we're going to start off by right clicking and creating a new composition. We're going to make this one white this time and it's 720p. I'm going to click OK and in that white composition I'm going to create a red solid. So if we go to new solid, so I just right clicked or you can go to layer new solid. And I'm going to make that solid red. So if you checked out my tutorial on effects, you should be familiar with making solids. I'm going to click OK. So we've now got a white composition and a red solid. If I click on this eye here, I can turn off the visibility of the solid so that we can see underneath it's white. To create a mask, what I need to do is go up to the pen tool here and I can begin creating a path. So if I click once, we'll start making a path and you can see that we get a yellow icon here. That's the first point along our path. If I hold down the left mouse button, I can create a curved path coming out there. If I just click instead of holding down, we'll create a linear path like so. And again, if I hold it down, we'll create a Bezier path. If you've ever used Illustrator or ever created vectors in Photoshop, you'll be familiar with creating vectors and paths. But if not, don't worry, just follow along with me. So I'm going to close it up by clicking on my first path. You'll see that my pen icon's changed to a pen with a circle next to it. And when I finish that off, we'll see that the red solid is now only showing through in this area that we've masked off. So this yellow line is a mask and that mask is created with a vector path that we've drawn with the pen tool. So if we go down to our composition and we click on this little triangle here, we can unfold our red solid layer and unfold the masks like so. And we can see that we've got lots of different options. And next to those options is a stopwatch. So all of these options are animatable. So if you remember our TRAPS acronym, we learned how to keyframe the opacity, rotation, anchor point, position, and scale of any layer. You can also animate all of these parameters within a mask. So let's just take a look at what those parameters do. The mask opacity, if we shove it down, makes it more transparent, or if we shove it up to the top, it makes it more opaque. The mask feather, the more we bump it up, the more diffuse the edges of the mask are, so the more kind of blurred out they are, the more feathered. The mask expansion expands the mask outside of its actual boundary, where you can shrink it down as well so that it pulls itself in. And the mask path, we can use the selection tool to move these points around. Make sure that you've clicked on the actual layer itself, because if you clicked on the mask and you try and move the points around, it'll end up moving your mask around, which isn't what you want. So make sure you've actually gone to the red solid and make sure you've clicked on it. And then when you move these points around, you'll be actually changing the shape of the mask. There we go, we can move that shape around, like so. So let's have a go at animating the mask path. If I go down to the parameter down here, I can click on the stopwatch, move through time, and then change some of these parameters. So again, I'm gonna click on the red solid to make sure that I'm editing paths. And I'm just gonna change this shape as much as possible. I'm gonna use this Bezier handle to change the shape of that curve. I might do the same up here, move the point down. So you can see we've got a very different shape there now. So if we play the whole animation through by pressing zero on the numeric keypad, 
for this RAM preview button here, we can see that After Effects has kind of morphed that mask so that it animates between those two positions, which is pretty cool. Let's just animate another couple of parameters. Let's animate the mask feather. So I'm going to go to the beginning, click on the mask feather stopwatch, and I'm going to press K to jump to the end, and I'm going to push the mask feather up quite so that it's 90 pixels. So if I jump to the beginning again and do a round preview, you can see that it gradually goes from being not feathered at all to very feathered. And equally, we could animate the mask opacity and extension in the same sort of way. Let's just have a go at that. I'm going to go to the beginning and click the stopwatch for mask opacity, and then skip to the end by pressing K and pull it down to about 50%. And I'm going to press J again to jump back to the beginning. I'm going to click on the mask expansion stopwatch, then press K to jump to the end. And I'm going to make it expand by 50 pixels. So let's press zero on the numeric keypad to do a round preview. So you can see that all of our parameters are animating there, and we're getting some really interesting results. Let's just take a look at one more example of how masks can be used. I'm going to delete this red solid, and I'm going to create a black solid by going to New, Solid, choosing Black. And I'm going to click OK. So now we've got a black solid. I'm going to create a mask in a slightly different way to before. Make sure that you've got the black solid selected, and then go up here to your Shape menu and choose the Ellipse then all you need to do is double click on this ellipse, like so. What that'll do is it'll create an elliptical mask, which fills your entire composition. So at the moment, it's only showing the black in this elliptical mask here. But that's not what I want. I want to invert that. So I can go down to my mask options here and click on invert. And if you want to get to your mask parameters quickly, once you've applied a mask, you can press M, or if you want to see all of them, you can press M twice, like so. So now that I've inverted it, the black's only around the outside. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to create a vignette for our composition. A vignette just darkens the edges of a composition, and it kind of mimics the look of old film cameras. So at the moment, this vignette's way too sharp, so we're going to add some feathering. I'm going to push that up nice and high. I think we want to reduce the opacity to about 60. So that we're seeing some of that white composition in the background. And I think we also want to expand it so that it fills less of the screen. It just sort of sits in the corners. We might want to feather it even more so it's really, really diffuse. You can see now we've got a really nice diffuse composition where it's darkening very slightly around the edges. So that's two different ways to use masks. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hextuber Colouring and Activity Book, and the Hextuber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.